left. I will now recognize myself uh, to go last. Uh, gentlemen, five minutes is not much time to resolve issues. It's barely enough time to raise them. So I don't know that I'll have that many questions for you other than raise points that I would like you to reflect upon. And then over the course uh, of your, your tenure, and as long as I'm in Congress, would like to work with your respective agencies to see if we can make some progress. I know both of you have been in the justice system before, so you've seen the majesty of a system that exceeds people's expectations. Um, there's a reason we have a phrase, may justice be done though the heavens fall. And it, it, it is beautiful and majestic to watch a justice system that inspires people. Uh, on the other side, um, if you've ever had witnesses that had knowledge refuse to cooperate, you've had victims um, that had no expectation whatsoever that the system would work for them, um, Perception is reality, and when you have communities uh, among our American family that don't have confidence in the justice system, it's all of our problems. And, and we can debate the legitimacy of those perceptions, but the perceptions remain. So my focus on whatever amount of time I have left in this job is to try to find that justice system that is not just respected, but worthy of respect, aspirationally worthy of respect. So I'm gonna raise some issues that may be unusual for Republicans to raise. Um, and I will start with the ratio between um, cocaine base and cocaine powder. Um, I understand it's a rational basis test. I understand we just have to have a reason for it, or at least they did when, when the law was initially passed. Uh, but at some point, Mr. Rosenberg, I, I'd love to sit down with whoever the, the pharmacological experts are at DNA, that, at the DEA, and, and, and understand what it is about the pharmacology of baking soda that makes the ratio 18 to 1. And if there is, if there is a basis for it, then, then help, me, help me understand it. I, I, I get, going back to con law, there's a rational basis test, but confidence in the justice system is the most compelling national interest we could possibly have. So uh, I'd love to work with the DEA and understand why a one-to-one -one ratio um, isn't better. Uh, mandatory minimums. Uh, some think they work great in violent crime cases. I would be in that camp. Uh, less so for uh, perhaps economic or nonviolent crime cases. Also, as a former prosecutor, no mandatory minimums are, are an effective way um, to get folks to cooperate. Um, but whether or not the, the drug amount levels need to be raised, whether there can be some proportionality as we, you know, treat methamphetamine and heroin and cocaine powder and cocaine base, you know, marijuana, it takes tractor trailers full to reach a mandatory minimum, but not so with other, with other drugs. One other point, um, I, I hear some of my friends mentioned a gun show loophole. There may be a background check loophole, but there's not a selling of a firearm to a prohibited person loophole. You can be prosecuted for giving a firearm to a prohibited person, whether you're an FFL or not. And one way to get the attention of folks who don't think that they have to do background checks is to see an uptick in prosecutions for folks who fail to ask simple questions. Are you a convicted felon? Have you been adjudicated mentally ill? Are you uh, subject to a restraining order in a domestic violence case? Uh, the notion that you can sell a firearm to whoever you want to is just not accurate. Maybe from a background check, but not from the actual uh, transfer of the weapon. And last point, Mr. Rosenberg, I, I, I know it's hard to prosecute doctors. I grew up with one. He's the most popular person in in the community that I grew up in, and I never would have won the district attorney's race had it not been for my father. I, I get how popular doctors are. Also get that it's impossible to get a prescription without going to a doctor. And there used to be a DEA diversion group that, that, that investigated physicians who were writing prescriptions outside the course of a legitimate medical practice. I assume DEA is still doing that. Uh, I hear more on the drug companies, the distributors, than I do that, that middle component. But getting physicians to understand that you cannot write 
prescriptions for controlled substances on napkins at a bar for someone that you just met, which is the fact pattern of one of the cases I handle. Getting that message out may also be part of us combating the op opioid uh, epidemic that we have. So uh, I'm going to recognize the uh, ranking member for her uh, concluding remarks, but I'll just tell you this, raised a lot of issues. I would love, not you, you're too busy and you're too busy, but just assign someone to come help me either understand what's going on or maybe we can make improvements on where they ought to be made. Um, I, I want a justice system that people respect. So 